So, was everybody still in their action this week? No. Stellar. Stellar. And definitely feel the difference. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. And also just what you did last week helped me be more aware of my narrative. Mm -hmm. And then I could choose to stop it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been a battle, but it, I can make that choice. Like, no, I'm not listening. No. Come on back. Yeah. Come on back. And I feel this pull more. And it's all the time. It's not just in the laboratory. It's everywhere. It's socializing. It's working. It's doing obligatory actions. Everyone knows obligatory actions. That's cleaning, cooking, bathing, everything that we have to do daily. All of it. It's all the time. So, we have to stop the fight. That's what this is about, is stopping the fight. And so, I wanted to say, again, as I did in Monday night's class, is do you want to be alive or dead? Because that's what it comes down to, life or death. And I've said it before that we have to face the ugly truth before we can get to the beautiful truth. And so in a lot of situations and in a lot of classes and a lot of workshops and a lot of places where they're doing sadhana, they say, oh, it's just all beautiful. And so you just jump to positivity, you jump to it's all beautiful. So then what are you going to do with your garbage? Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Polish it. <laughs> what? Polish it. Polish it. You, there's no place to put it out for on, you know, to be collected if we're not accepting that we actually have it. Because who we actually are is beautiful is love, is clear, is clean. So that's who I've decided I am now. Then what happens? I keep on getting banged by the world, right? Yeah. Experience and liberation, education, and my smile starts to go down. <laughs> And I'm not so happy anymore. And what am I going to do because I'm not happy? Because I, I have to be happy because I'm not happy. Because I know who I am. Sure. <laughs> now you're going to do something you regret. Yeah. Sooner or later. And then the whole thing crashes. Whole thing crashes. So we have to surrender to the way it is. Not the way we want it or imagine. We have to surrender, which means we have to open our eyes and look. And if everything is God, even that ugliness is God. Even the ugliness is God. It's all God. So we're closer to God, and this is what I keep on saying for myself, I'm closer to God facing that ugliness than imagining and pretending all the beautiful. If I'm in purgatory, or even hell, but I'm imagining I'm in paradise, there's a problem. And that's what happens. We gloss it over, we pretend, we imagine, we do all kinds of things, and then we don't go anywhere. So we need to stop running away from the truth. Just accept it. What happens when you accept it? Relief. It becomes not a big deal anymore. Not a big deal. There's a relaxing. There's a peace that happens. And then, lo and behold, we start to move. But we can't move until we're willing to accept where we actually are. And if we don't, we're stuck forever. Smiling in the muck. <laughs> we laugh, but it's true. It's true. So why do we avoid? Yeah? It's painful. Painful. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because we want to run from pain, right? Yep. Yeah. The 
problem is, what happens when we turn and face pain? Yeah? It goes away. It goes away. What happens when we run from pain? It follows It follows us, it gets bigger, it, it's, yeah. It's like, I'm coming, I'm with you, I'm coming, I'm with you. We don't, we don't ever get rid of it. But if we have the guts, the courage, and that's what sadhana is about, to turn around and actually face, face it and be with it, we'll still it. And it actually goes away goes away. But if I'm attached to pleasure, where am I going? Toward pain. Toward pain. And then I go past pain. I think I'm going past pain, right? And I'm going out the door. Am I going to get pleasure? Well, I might get it for a nanosecond and then what happens? Squish. It's gone. Pain again. Pain again. So if I'm looking outside for pleasure and running from one direction to from one direction to another, all over the place, and I'm running, I believe I'm running from pain, but I keep on remember pain's always we're friends. And I'm if I'm attached to pleasure, I'm attached to pain and if I'm running away where am I what am I actually running from the most myself which means which means God God I'm also running away from love yeah. I'm actually running from love if I'm going for pleasure I'm not going for love that is a very important point. If I'm going for pleasure, I'm not going for love. Oops. And so, I have to give up pleasure. And if we look at the whole process of what <coughs> sadhana is, you give up the ephemeral, you then go and you turn around and face the pain, you still it, and then what happens? Oh, love. You go in the right direction. So, people don't want to do it because what you said is pain hurts. So what hurts? What actually hurts? There's the acceptance that you do have pain. A lot of people, especially in today's society, don't want to accept that they have any pain. Mm -hmm. And there's also the acknowledgement and then acceptance that you at least were half the fault in whatever pain you had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whose experience is the pain? We do. Ours. Ours. Our pain. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, that, that really, well, you have to accept that you chose that. Mm -hmm. you, it was your own, it was your own will, you, you went for that. Mm -hmm. And until we see that I'm in an environment where it's, I'm get, this is what I'm getting, and I thought I was getting something else, and we're not accepting. Once we start accepting, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. All of a sudden, we start to wake up. We're not so dead anymore. We get to be alive. So, people say, do not love because it hurts. Is it true? No. Is it true? There's some yeses in there. The truth is, hurt hurts. Love loves. And it seems really funny, it seems like, well, yeah, but that's what we do. We conflate and we then decide love hurts. Doesn't hurt. Love loves. Hurt hurts. So if I'm in a relationship that I call 
loving or love and all I get is hurt, am I actually in a loving relationship? No. I have to call it what it is. I'm in a hurting relationship. Oh, right. Then all of a sudden reality hits. Then I can go, everything, oh, I got it. Oh, oh, oh. Does care hurt? No, no, no. I get, if I get lost in somebody, is that going to hurt? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Could? Of course it does. Yeah. Why? You're not, care of You're not taking care of yourself. You're you losing lost yourself. yourself. You've lost yourself. So, is that actually caring? No. 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 But we call that being involved well, and caring <laughs> and loving. But we're actually lost it. Oh, that's why I'm hurting. It's not because I care too much. I care too much. No, I get lost too often. If I get lost, am I caring? No. So I'm going to hurt. I'm going to hurt. If I have expectations, because I want the best for you, am I going to probably end up hurting? Yes. Yes. <laughs> because I'm not really accepting reality. I have to accept it the way it is. And when we surrender, what happens? The hurt goes away. But people see surrender as a negative thing as giving up, as losing. That's the joke. So when I started the talk, I said, to, we have to stop fighting. We have to stop the fight. Oh, so you, you're, you're fatalistic? You're giving up? You're not going to... I'm going to bang my head against the wall over and 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 over again. Is it changing anything? No. The best I can do, if that is my dharma and destiny, is to be still while I bang my head against the wall. Because I'm not going to accomplish anything other than a sore head. And maybe the wall will eventually break down. Eventually. But probably not because it's concrete. What's, what are we supposed to do? We're, we are supposed to accept what we've got. But I have this idea, isn't that, isn't that mean? Isn't that negative? No, it's reality. Is there anything wrong with it? That's where we get to the problem. We keep on saying, oh, it's not what I wanted. Well, who is it that wanted? So, this is where, does life, life hurt? Does life hurt? That's another phrase, life hurts. Does life hurt? No, death hurts. If we choose death, aren't we hurting ourselves every single day? God's about life. Living, aliveness, and we're choosing to be separate from. It. We're choosing the other thing. Life doesn't hurt. Choosing death hurts. And I'm not saying dying, as in dead, gone. I'm talking about being inert, dissociating pretending. Not facing life just the way it actually is. 
And once we start doing it and see that we're just characters, we're just players in a part, it gets to be pretty funny. Oh my God, I picked this character. Oh my God, what was I thinking? Oops, I'm stuck with it now for how many more years? I think I can change my lines a little bit now. But if I don't accept it, if I don't want to be alive, I cannot. It's always going to be the same lines. Same, same, same. So we, this is where will comes in. Desire. So I have a desire for this, a desire for that. Am I going to put in the effort to do it? Am I actually going to stick with it and follow through? Or is it just a desire that fleets? If it's a desire that just goes away, then what kind of will do I have? Weak. Weak. If this is right effort, what's right effort? Using the will to turn to God. What's third level? Shambhavupaya. <coughs> By a mere orientation of the will, we rest in the heart. It's the will, and we have to strengthen our will. And if we're in a culture that's going strictly for the pleasure of the moment, what kind of will do we have? Nothing. And that's what I'm looking at. A lot of people, a lot of young people, a lot of are being brought up now to just they want we want you to be happy so whatever you want you get so it's all about pleasure if you're happy is pleasure happiness no joy love is where happiness is and so until the child until each one of us turns around and let's go of the pleasure, and let's go of the pain, and goes in. We're just going to be miserable. And we're going to hate, and we're going to be miserable, and we're going to think that we deserve something else. So, if you accept and surrender, are you then giving in? No. But what people say, why didn't you fight that person? Why didn't you, you why didn't you say something? If you see that anything you say is not going to do or change a situation, why are you opening your mouth? If you see somebody who is actually <coughs> open and wants something, that changes it, right? They'll receive. You can actually work together. If you open your mouth when somebody else is completely closed, what are you doing? You're hurting yourself and hurting. That's right. Exactly. And what happens is we think we're going to help them, and we're not at all. We're not at all. We need to zip it. Sometimes I, I will say, you, you won, you trained me well. You trained me well. I don't say anything, I don't have anything. I wanted to train you, but you didn't want to be trained. I got it. And I, if I look at Baba's phrase, I give you what you want, so someday you want what I have to give you. He just accepted where people were at. He knew, accepted, they didn't want, okay. So I'll just be nice and friendly to you. 
I won't give you anything that that I actually have unless at some point you actually want it. And that's being trained well. And if we're trained well, are we fighting anymore? No. And it actually works for everybody. And then where do we put our energy? With the people that want to share instead of still hitting our heads against the wall. Removes the pleasure. So there's a lot of fun fighting. For a lot of people it is. And if I have pain, I'm going to express it through fighting, trying to stop or kill or destroy what is causing <coughs> me the pain. But what is actually causing me the pain? Right. Me. So if I turn around and I still the pain, then we go, they're still doing what they're doing, right? But what's different? You're not engaging in that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. So the misconception always is surrender is going to passive, going mm -hmm. to nothingness, whatever. Mm -hmm. The differentiation between that and true surrender is it's difficult to learn. Yes. Or understand. Well, if you accept in that, that absolute letting go and s facing reality, are you then, and you're looking at it, and you see anything I do in this situation would be futile. Mm -hmm. And so if I stop, I'm called passive. What do I have to do? Get okay with being passive. But not always... But you shouldn't always be passive. And, and no, I'm and saying if it's fruit, futile. Right, if it's futile. If I'm surrendered, I will also be able to see and discern the people that want to engage. Because if I'm not surrendered, I will probably, according to my system, decide the wrong people who want to engage and the ones who don't want to engage. I will be completely confused and I'll miss the point. Right. So it has to be discernment. And then who becomes the actor at that point? Oh. God. Right. God's the actor. So the three in Kashmir Shaivism, what are the three malas, the three impurities? I am separate. I am imperfect. And I am the doer of good and bad deeds. And the truth is, I'm not separate, I'm not imperfect, in truth, not my little Rohini, and I'm not the doer, God is. So once we're surrendered in that way, we can actually discern and we will act more appropriately. So. Right now, in, in terms of working, I, sometimes working a lot and very hard and get things accomplished because it's appropriate. At other times, no, I'm not going to answer that call. I know. So that person will think um, passive or I'm not available or something. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It would be inappropriate. You understand? Yeah. So you can, in fact, discern. It's not about surrender does not mean you're then not acting. Mm -hmm. Surrender means you're going to act. You're surrendering to acting appropriately in harmony with God. Okay. And that could be very much the opposite of passive. 
Absolutely, that could be incredibly right. dynamic. Right. Also, like sometimes if you're surrendered, like for me, that surrendered to the idea that I that I can't speak, you know, so surrendering and then being able to not, you know, to be more assertive exactly. in my action because I'm surrendering to that idea I have of myself. Mm -hmm. so it's not a passive. Exactly. Action. Exactly. That's exactly right. What happens is we are maintaining. Remember, if we're caught in that and not wanting to face the ugly truth, we're going to be maintaining pain and looking for pleasure. If we turn around and we start facing the truth, we're going to have to surrender our idea of how we are supposed to proceed. If we are tend to be passive, then probably you know, at least 50% of the time we've been inappropriate. We then can, if we surrender to that reality, we then can act appropriately and that is surrendering. Mm -hmm. So yes, people are going to think of surrender as losing. That's okay. As long as you don't. As long as you're clear what surrender is. Oh, you do everything that person tells you to do? Yeah, because they happen to be right every time. So, I got it. Well, then you're just a, a ridiculous fall. Yeah, and that's okay. It's again back to acceptance. Sure. So, part of this is, is casting out the demons, which is what you're talking about a little bit, and what you're saying. It's ca you have to cast out your demons. And what do the demons tell us? That they're not demons. <laughs> that they're not demons. They're looking. They're good friends. They're looking out for us. They want what's best for us. And so we then will make choices mm -hmm. that take us down that same road to death, over and over and over again. Yeah, I think the thing is that demons. The idea that's put forward is that they're, they're very obvious who they are or what they are, and they're really the the opposite of that. Right. They're the last thing you expect. Right, and that was what we what I read last week about. I think it was last week before about the Pope Francis mm -hmm. when he said about idolatry, mm -hmm. and we have idols, and where are they? They're in our personality. And so I call it secret altars. He calls it idolatry. It's the same thing. We are attached to ideas that we are keeping close to ourselves. We don't share it. And those are our demons. Those we worship them. And those, those qualities are our demons. And they convince us over and over and over again to make choices and decisions that will take us down the road. This is where I keep saying it's like Froggy the Gremlin when I was a kid on Andy's gang. And he just goes, and then you do this. And then the guy goes, and then I do this. And he gets smacked. And he goes, eh, 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 eh. and if you notice, if you actually are listening clearly enough, you get that demon who's gonna say, <laughs> and then he goes, you should have known better. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway you got it, you're not going to win with him. I mean, he's going to get you every which way. And that's what we, we listen to those voices. And so our job is if we're going to disentangle from the pain, from the pleasure, from the pain, we have to shut up. We have to shut up. We have to still. And if we still, 
and we act in that stillness. We're not passive. And we actually can assess and see. Does that mean we're just placid and we're just smiling all the time? No. We can be furious. We can be anything. We can act anyway. But what? Be appropriate. Be a little clearer. Yes. And when it's over, you drop it. Did it? Drop it. Love. Back to the love. Not so bad. Not so bad in there. Back to the love. Drop it. So is love then, if you love and you're not fighting, are you going to be a stooge? A patsy? People who love are patsies, there's a great one. Is that true? No, if you actually love, not the kind of loves that they're talking about, but if you actually love, you're going to, each of us, is going to be able to be clear in a way that's very powerful. And that sometimes the most loving thing we can do is say, no. Other times, if we're clear and we know and we're surrendered, we're going to serve the situation and we are going to be the best supporting actors for the people that are out there that don't want to change. If I'm sulking because I don't like what they're doing, what are they going to think? They're not supportive. They're not supportive, and what else? They're going to think, I'm the problem. Mm -hmm. I'm the problem. Whereas if I just serve the situation, and know it, consciously, awake, I will actually be pushing the point <coughs> unwittingly toward a change because I'm shining a light of consciousness in there. So instead of yelling and changing and black to div to death, I'm modeling. And they can't you can't fight that. Can't get they can't get. Can't get. Is this clear? So, stop the fight. Love does not hurt. Big thing. Hurt hurts. And unless you're really enjoying your time with hurt, I suggest we accept what really is. We disentangle. We go in. We go. Face reality. If everything is God, what's wrong with reality? And is reality negative? No. Only if I want this to be a yellow cup and I'm really, really angry it's red and I'm not going to accept that it's red, I wanted it, wanted, desire, will is turned inappropriately toward something that just ain't going to happen here. So that's, if I can accept my will and train my will to be strong and focused toward God, then, okay, I got it. Okay, I'm okay. Okay, 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 you okay? Okay. 
But, 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 no.
love loves. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.